Hi, and welcome to Sometimes Amanda. I am Amanda, and I'm that pretty consistently, despite the name of the channel, which is called Sometimes Amanda. Anyway, uh, as you can see, I have rebranded the channel a little bit. I've uh, committed more to an aesthetic, even though I didn't want the aesthetic to sort of pigeonhole me into uh, one type of content or even like a couple of types of different, you know, content paths. I want to leave it open as possible, but still, uh, have my personality, I guess, and my image sort of associated with everything because as much as I love photography, I also love music and I love movies. Um, and I think in the future I can foresee the channel sort of uh, covering a lot of different things. I think sometimes Amanda is like focused enough to create sort of like a, a branding, but not so zoomed in on a specific thing to where I am tied down to only doing a, a certain type of content, which is what I wanted. Um, as a matter of fact, there may or may not be a hint as to uh, a future video that I will be doing uh, at some point. So, uh, I mean, no hints or anything, but you know, be on the lookout for that. So my last video about the D3 was like half scripted and half kind of winged. This time I wanted to do something different. I wanted to, I guess, wing it a bit more and talk about shooting with the Lubitel 166, uh, which is here. Um, I bought this off of eBay for about 50 bucks uh, because I want to move into doing medium format photography. I've never done it before. Uh, in my dream camera, just based on like YouTube videos that I've watched and, and, uh, photos that I've seen is the Mamiya 645. Uh, but the Mamiya 645 runs about $500 and I didn't want to jump into medium format photography with a camera that price, even though a lot of YouTubers will say that that is affordable, which I guess compared to other medium format cameras, it is affordable. It's just not super affordable for me. So I went with this, which is sort of, um, it's a Lomo camera and I guess it's, it's somewhat classified as like a toy camera, but the results are normally very good. Normally. Um, I went out and shot with this last weekend over the course of Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I went into downtown Savannah and, uh, just sort of took some random photos of, of things that I was walking by. It was about 170 degrees. Uh, and so that was a bit of a challenge in itself. I guess the first thing to note about this camera is that it's old. <laughs> in my head, 1980 is still 20 years ago, but actually it's more like 40 years ago. Uh, so this is the Olympic edition of the Lubitel 166. And I bought it because uh, I just wanted something, I guess, that was a little bit different. Uh, it's, it's a collector's item, which I mean, it was 50 bucks. It's not that much of a collector's item. Um, I had to look at a YouTube video on how to put the film in and, uh, everything seemed to be going quite well until I started shooting and I realized that the, that the count here, which I mean, the, the window is so small, there's no way you can really see it, but the frame count window here, uh, when I would shoot a picture, it would, and I would advance it, it would stop halfway between the last number and the, and the, uh, the number ahead, which I originally thought was some like overly complicated way of counting the frames. Um, it wasn't until Sunday, my second day of shooting this, that it hit me that I was probably going to get some uh, frames that were exposed multiple times. And I was right. I uh, developed the film and, well, had it developed, I didn't do it myself. And yeah, and all the frames, every single frame <laughs> had multiple exposures, which is fine if that was what I was aiming for. Um, I do appreciate weird artsy, like multiple exposures 
exposed uh, pictures, but I wanted something a bit less quirky and and none of them even really look all that cool, which is kind of disappointing. When I figured out that uh, that the frames were gonna be multi like have multiple exposures, my hope was that it would at least look cool, but because it was unintentional, like I couldn't really uh, make it, you know, look any, you know, cool. I couldn't make it look cool. Anyway, uh, so what I wanted to do was actually show a few pictures that were at least okay, I guess. None of them really came out all that great, but uh, I spent a lot of money developing them and putting them on film. So we're going to show at least a few of them. So, uh, there we go. Okay, so um, we have the first picture here. This was taken, um, well, there's actually three pictures here <laughs> now that I'm really looking at it. So the first one you can see with the flags here, this was on River Street. Um, and this was next to Fiddler's uh, Crab House. You can see the banner there. That was a picture by itself. And then behind here, you can see the Talmadge Bridge here, which is the bridge in Savannah that connects to South Carolina. Um, and that's a picture. And then up here, you can kind of see this sort of brassy figure up here. This was a statue that is in a new development here called Plant Riverside. Uh, so, and I don't know what this is. I This looks like maybe like torn film or something. I'm not really sure. But so, so this is technically three different exposures here. Maybe even four, no, it's just three. Um, three different exposures, or maybe it is four. I feel like this might be something up here. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess the, the exposure that comes in the most, the clearest is the bridge. So I'm guessing that this is sort of the, the frame that I was sort of most on when I was taking the picture. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I don't, it's, it's fine, I guess. Moving on. All right. So the next picture that we have is again in Plant Riverside. Uh, and this is actually inside of the, um, I guess, so the main area, even though I didn't realize until I got there that all the pictures I had been seeing of this area, this is actually the lobby of the hotel that's there. It's it's a very um it's a very like uh, upscale hotel, like probably like 4 5 star, which is way above what I usually stay in. So I don't remember I don't remember which one it is. It's either the Hyatt or the Hilton. Um but anywho, uh this is a this was probably the frame that had the dinosaur that I was trying to take a picture of. There's this huge sort of silver metal T-Rex that's sort of suspended from the ceiling. Um, it's the whole lobby is kind of dinosaur fossil themed. Now, I don't know if, if it'll stay that or if they'll like switch out the themes, you know, every couple of months or every year or so. But right now it is dinosaurs and uh, and fossils and, and I guess archeology span and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so the main frame was that, and then up here was a picture of a fossilized turtle that I t uh, took a picture of separately. As you can see, I was not quite focused. Um, the Louboutin is sort of famously hard to focus. And so I, I really didn't mess around with the focusing too much. Um, I just left it on infinity and hoped that I had stepped back for far enough for it to not be blurry, but uh, that was not a thing that happened here. Um, and there's two lights here. Uh, these are actually not part of this picture. This is the third exposed picture and it's part of um, that brass, this uh, this here, which I want to say is Mozart, uh, like a, a statue of Mozart. But there were uh, pictures that were, sus or I'm sorry, there were lights that were suspended from the ceiling that sort of sh that shone down 
on the statue. So in this picture is where those lights actually ended up, which is uh, kind of interesting. But um, I think out of all of them, I like the composition of this one the most. It, if if I were doing this intentionally, this is this might have been something I tried to do uh, intentionally, just with the turtle in focus. Uh, the next picture here uh, is probably my second favorite picture of of this <laughs> catastrophe of uh, of developments here. Um, this was at Forsyth Park. This also has three different ex uh, different exposures. Um, there's an exposure here with this uh, young artist here that I saw in the park. She was selling her her um, her artwork here. And then down here, I I want to say this is the first picture I took of her. Um, I was sitting on the bench that was directly across from her, and I just really liked sort of the um, the view that I was getting through the through the waist level viewer. Um, and so I, I took this picture at first and then she sat down and she started drawing and I thought that was, that would make a pretty cool picture. And so I, I took that one as well. Um, but as you can see, my camera, uh, just decided to smush all of it together. Uh, and here is actually the third exposure here. This is of the fountain. If you, uh, know anything about Savannah, Georgia, there's a very famous fountain that is in Forsyth Park. And I took a picture of it because you have to take a picture of the fountain whenever you take pictures of Forsyth. It's like an unwritten rule of Savannah, even if you're from here. Um, so there's the third exposure down there. Um, I I kind of like it. It almost looks intentional. Um, I, I I like the way the all the greenery from the trees that were that were kind of at the top of this exposure here. It kind of bleeds into this one. Um, but I would have rather it just be one exposure. Um, this one was also in Forsyth Park. This was, I, I found this tree pretty interesting. I, I don't, I don't ever recall really seeing this tree any other time, except for when I was, um, except for when I was taking pictures. Maybe it's because when you're taking pictures and especially when you're taking pictures on film, like you're sort of more hyper aware of things that are worthy of taking pictures of. So I don't know. Uh, but this, I think this is, this is probably also three exposures, but I really only see two here. Um, there was this blurry one, which I knew as I was taking it, it was going to be blurry. Um, there's this blurry one of one of the pathways, like the main sort of pathway that's, that's down the middle of Forsyth, uh, Forsyth Park. Um, that was the blurry one. This one was fine. Um, but you know, there's sort of a weird sort of blurry, uh, sort of shadow now being cast over the tree. Um, and then I, I guess it looks like the tree is sort of growing, like there's this very big tree sort of growing out of the, the pathway of trees that kind of go down the side the sidewalk here. So that may or may not be cool. And I, I guess because I just realized the third exposure is actually up here. This was um, a sidewalk that was closer to my house. So this is this is the third exposure up here. And here we have the very last picture that I took. Um, this was the picture where I sort of realized that it was probably double exposing all the frames. Um, I thought this car here sort of positioned in front of the house was kind of neat. And I may have been trying to frame it between the trees here. I think I was, but I was frustrated because I had figured out what the camera was doing. And so I just wanted to, um, just use all the film and, uh, get it out of the camera and get it developed so I could see what was going on. But, you know, I, I guess this is sort of the, the one picture too, where I can actually see uh, the quality of the camera and of the film that I used. Um, and I really like it. I like the results that I got in sort of these glimpses of like normal uh, frames here. Um, it just sucks that all the pictures ended up, you know, looking, you know, uh, uh, looking a way that I, I wasn't really expecting them to look. 
um, because I, I really did tr take my time, you know, framing up the shot and um, metering it to making sure making sure the exposure was right and and and, and whatnot. So it it sucks a little that I had some unintentional <laughs> lomography here, uh, but um, maybe maybe next time. So I guess the good news is that I really liked shooting medium format. I really liked um, the the framing, especially of the six by six. And I know the Mamiya 645 does not have the same sort of um, shape to the pictures. Uh, but I, I did like the idea of shooting just a larger format than 35 millimeter. Um, and I feel like also with Instagram being a thing for the last several years, it, I felt like that sort of prepared me to to sort of think like in square, you know, images. So I guess if Instagram has been good for anything, it's it's that. I really want to continue to shoot in medium format, but um, I don't think I want to continue to try and do it on this camera. Um, I So I read online uh, when I was looking up uh, basically like how to fix this or if there was a, any sort of solution to this. Um, I read a post that said basically, I guess the best way to overcome the double exposing, which seemed like it was semi-common for this camera was to force the advance to go to the next number. Uh, but that sounds like it could sort of damage the camera and in turn damage the film that's inside. So I'm not really sure if I want to do that, but I'm also not sure what else is out there sort of in this price range um, that has this quality because even though it is considered like a toy camera, the quality is really nice. Um, and I, I know there's options like a Holga and, and the, the Diane or Diana, whatever it's called. Um, but I don't want anything that looks super plasticky or, or super distorted. I do like the idea of getting like really clean, sort of more traditional photos. Um, so I really, I, I really like something else on the, in the line of, of the, uh, Lubitel 166, but of course something that works properly, of course. So if you have any suggestions for, uh, other cameras I can try to, uh, get off of eBay or some other, you know, uh, used item site like eBay, I'll leave it down in this, in the description. Um, or, or if you know a trick to how to overcome the double exposing on the Lubitel 166, or if there's a way to fix it that doesn't involve taking apart the entire fucking camera, which I do not want to do. Uh, although I did see that as, as a suggestion online and was immediately uh, not down for that. Um, also let me know in the comments, let me, uh, you know, tell me if there's a way to fix it without dismantling it completely. Um, yeah, if any of you guys out there shooting medium format or have shot medium for medium format, um, did you like it? Uh, do you do it more than 35 millimeter now? Um, do you have any plans of shooting, uh, medium format? If you haven't, uh, this has been something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And I'm happy that I got to do it, even though I didn't really love the results. Um, it was fun to finally get to do something that I had been planning to do for a while. So that's it. That's the video. Um, thankfully I'm in a much better mood than I was for the video about the D3, which I'll link somewhere in the description. If you haven't seen it, it's, uh, it's, it's <laughs> quite entertaining. So that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, thanks Slipknot for <laughs> popping up on, on my phone. I will be so happy when I can actually, uh, get some sort of actual like video recording device. That's not my phone because I get so distracted by all the notifications that pop up on the side. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Thank you for subscribing or thank you for, thank you for watching like, and subscribe if, if you feel so inclined. Um, and I will see you in the next video.